Hey guys, welcome to another episode of All Base Creations Effects Tutorials, Demos, and Review. Today, we'll be going through 
pretty much how to set your um set your B6 up with your Tone X1 pretty much and just how to overall um or any really any um any uh, multi effects pedal um this is just one way that you can do it if if the pedal allows like a lot of newer pedals have effects loops the effect, the pedal needs effects loops and you need the ability to blend the return and the dry on the um, effects loop as well, which the B6 allows. Um, you know, another thing you're going to need is a way to split your signal from your bass into two, um, which something like um, I'm using the Zoom B3, but you can also do it with the um, MS60B and the new ones that are coming out as well. Um, MS50G does it. Um, you can also do it with preamps like the Ampeg SGT, and you can do the way to do it through this um, would be to um, you can use the preamp out to go to um, one part and then the, use the through, which is unaffected but still you know um, allows your bass tone your dry bass tone to go through unaffected by the preamp so that's effectively splits it into two for you right there and you know if you got a sgt you still have an xlr out right there as well so it's just um a lot of times for me it's not so much me separating um um i just the way i set up things is, is just so i could just have the flexibility to well i want to tap in here in in the in the you know um signal chain or i want to tap out here you know i don't want to just be able to go from the input to the output i want to be able to take things in and out um you know i mean completely in or out you know that's why i have a switcher here so i if i can take a whole you know three pedals at a time out when i need to you know thing, things like that not um it's three pedals on each of these switches these first two and just that um Jensler on this one effects loop but pretty much this is going to allow you to blend multiple irs together from multiple devices so i have my b6 and my tonex here um as you can see on my ipad that's the um b6 uh, on the bottom left of your screen and you can see the tonex right next to my head there um so, how do I have them set up? So, I'm coming into the Zoom B3 down bottom here, the one with three lights. And simply, I'm just coming into the input. And from that imp input, um, there it allows stereo. It has stereo output. So, I just take the left side, and I'm running it through all the effects here. So, it's run through this entire board. But I have, of course... I have a switcher down here. That's the thing with the silver thing with the green light on it. That's um, three effects loops. It's also three additional effects loops here. I know it's a lot. I'm just explaining it just so because it looks, it probably looks more complicated than it is. But just long story short, I'm going into the Zoom B3 input and using that to split my signal into two, into left and right for stereo purposes. All right, and then I got one side going through. So the left side is going through the rest of the signal chain through the pedals and into the B6. And the other, the right side, is going directly into the tone X, right? And then I'm running the tone X output into the return of the Zoom B6. So effectively, I have two different amp sounds there. That's what you saw on the screen before. So um this return and this dry are two different amp signals and i mean completely different amp signals complete amp, amp and cabinet so um the return is the tone x one which allows so let's hear a little bit of that again And this is a, an, a model I made, and this model will be available to, um, to you guys as well at some point. You'll be able to buy these, subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget, 
need you to do that for sure. Go ahead, hit that button for me. Um, and hit the super thanks if you feeling froggy and you want to jump. You know what I'm saying? In the cash app. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Tone X is running into the return there. And here we go. It's and oh, I was I was going to explain that that Tonex on the Tonex is the amp and cabinet model I made from my um, SGT running into a 1073 um, mic pre running into that Harky TX 600 preamp two preamp, but I kept it flat on there. So I did the EQ from the SGT pretty much. And that's running into a Fender Bassman Neo 115. And that's mic'd up with um, two CAD mics, um, a D10 and a GXL 2200. So here we go. So it's a great sounding um you know model. That is a really accurate model of what it sounds like. So like again I had that um condenser mic on the tweeter and I had a like a kick mic on the um which is a mic that pretty much handles lower sub frequencies really well. Um it's a condenser um dynamic mic, excuse me. Um so yeah, I put that on the, you know, the center of the speaker. And I put the condenser mic on a, the tweeter. So so you get nice, clear highs in there. You know, get a lot of detail into the sound. So that's one side. That's going to be our right side. Well, not even our right side because this is actually running mono. This is the mono setup. The other video is the stereo setup. That's the other video. Yeah, check that one out too. Um, pretty much, you know, you want to... I have two different signal chains so I can have on this side, if I'm, I'm using my analog preamps, I can just swap these out. Um, these three out, um, the Gensler, the Aguilar, and the Ampeg. But I also can have those three sounds coming through that cabinet, which I love. I love those sounds coming, those um, preamps coming through that cabinet in real life, right? So I didn't have, I, I couldn't, I, there's no IR of that. There's no, of that speaker, there's no... Um, model already of these stuff so i made some right and that way i can take all my the way things sound at home i get to take it anywhere i go and it sounds like it's in this room you know being played 
you know what I'm saying, through that exact setup, because that's exactly what it is, you know. Um, it's just like a, a snapshot, a picture of it. I know sometimes impulse responses are hard for people to get a wrap their mind around, but they're a little different than, um, uh, say, they're 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 just they're a little different than than um, cabinet simulations. They are they're like uh, what's a good analogy? Just know it's it's meant to sound like a cabinet, the way the cabinet sounds in the room, mic'd up through uh, a particular mic and console setup, you know, so. So that's that's very close. You know, of course, you can add just a smidge of reverb on there. I have a little bit of reverb on there. And you can hear nice reverb on it. And that's very, you know, when you're using these sounds live or in your in ears, a little bit of reverb actually works on bass. It's just a little smidge, like a little smidge, because it, it, it makes it, um, I like big heavy bass sounds. If you can't tell, like I like, I like, it. I like you be able to feel it. But at the same time, I want when I'm in the in ears, it can feel like it's like right here, like it's too close, and I'm not. I want it to sound in my in ears like I'm listening through, like I'm listening to the amp without headphones. That's how I particularly like it to sound in my in ears. I like to see, I like it to sound how it sounds in the room, but just coming through my headphones, you know. Um, so I try to set it up like that. So just a smidge of reverb. If you're working in the studio or if you're sending recording tracks, you don't really want to add that reverb on there because it can get really annoying. For um, let me see what my Sorry, guys, my mic went a little down. But, yeah, it can get really, um, you don't want to do that in the studio, though. You want all that off. You take that, um, not too much compression, you know. You want just mild compression, um, you know, however you EQ it and get it to sound the way you want it to sound is your business. But, you know, um, you want to take off some of that stuff that you don't necessarily need. So if you're playing bass parts, you don't have to have that reverb. For live stuff, it works well, but in the studio, they're going to want to be able to manipulate stuff a little differently. So, And live, you might not need it. You know, if you're just playing in the headphones, like I'm playing, um, doing the video, right? And so, like, me playing... That makes it sound like I'm just playing in my room. You know what I'm saying? It is it's a little bit much on there right now, you know, but it makes it feel like you're playing in the room a little bit better, especially you practicing. It makes you feel like you're on a big stage. the tone x one um on my personal setting there um and just some tips for the tone x one real quick while we're on there <laughs> you know um definitely the when so say you're in one of the modes like this you know just a regular old mode when it's solid that's your eq right um this is this big knob is your the amps master value 
right? Think of that as the master volume. When this is blinking and you're in the alternate mode, this is the gain of the amp. So the big knob is the gain then. So if you have sounds that you, if you have, like I have some overdrive stuff in here, and I can actually just pull that up. Let me see. Like this one, I think. Here it is. Let me see. SDT SVT. <laughs> I know it's a lot of initials, but this is pretty much the SVT voicing on on the Ampeg preamp. This one, right? So if it's blinking like this, and I want I want it to get dirtier. First off, you can bring the master volume down. You still keep your dirt. You press the Alt button. Now you can be, oh! That's exactly what that sounds like on there. Watch this. Right? That's nasty. That's nasty. It even got the game right, which is bananas. How did it get the game right, though? The game even gets... I love this little joint. And I know sometimes it doesn't sound as processed as other things. That's because it's a lot of times these are raw captures. So people, um, so um, when you're modeling these, you you know, you, you need outboard gear too. You know what I'm saying? Like a decent audio interface or mixer, you know, um, decent EQ. Um, you can add EQ to it. You can also, and these are all in the chain of these models. You know, you got to do all this stuff in there all at once. And to get that really nice, pristine, not, you know, not even talking about super processed sound, but just like a nice, um, a nice sound to it. Um, nice, creamy, warm sound. They got some weight to it. Yeah, I love the fact that this thing, and then I can, you want to turn the seat? Now, I'm still getting the dirt because it's the master. It's just changing the volume. But if I change the, this, then I don't get as much dirt, and I can actually get it cleaner. Oh! That's stupid. That's dumb. That is dumb. I modeled one setting. Like, I modeled one setting. And it modeled the, the game staging extremely well. Extremely well. That's crazy. That is bananas. So, anyway... take this Aguilar here and this is the Aguilar um this is the Aguilar um AG preamp and that running into a Neve preamp running into that Harky head flat then the Fender Bassman Neo 115 running into the condenser on the tweeter dynamic um you know, kick mic on the speaker and all that running into the audio interface to create this.
try to clip the little bit there, guys. So you can scoop it, you'll be able to do whatever, you got EQ on there, but it gives you a separate channel, and these are kind of like little multi-effects units, so, you know, you can have it, use that as a three-channel switcher and have different sounds on here too, you know, distortion and all that stuff, auto signal chain tone models running through this one, the Tone X1, This because this is pretty much how I'm using this setup. I'm using this and my B6 as separate, um, like, I'm using them together, but I'm using them as, like, separate signal chains in here, and then I'm using the B6 to mix the two, pretty much. So, here is what's coming through the B6. Big, big body tone. So that is literally just the SGT, um, just the preamp side, um, running into this Aguilar um, 410s with a tweeter, mic'd up with a SM57 and a RE20. Um, and here are the settings for it. It's on the... It's, Available on all the Zoom B6. It's on Zoom B6. It's on the MS60B Plus. It's also on the B24. So this and this, um, the rest of these, all of these effects are available on, on all of those units. So um, you'll be able to pull this off. Um, except for the um, the effects unit side of the stuff. It, I mean, the effects loop. Um, the MS60B doesn't have the same effects loop. Um, doesn't have an effects loop at all, actually, you know. Um, but the uh, I'm not sure if the B24 does either. But um, either way, you know, you'll have avail you have these IRs, um, you have this IR available on and this limiter, um, which is limiter 76 and the pre 1073, you have that available on the B6 as well. So. You know, what's interesting is um, it's the routing, you can move these around when you split them like this instead of having them as just one um, 
FX loop, like using just the one that says FX loop, you can move these around. If I need to run effects before, because what I the way I have it split up is I just have the tone X coming into the return, remember? It's just coming into, so you're like, why do I have to send? The send is to go to my actual physical amp. So I got my physical amp available to me as well when I'm on a gig, if I want to patch that in, you know, I have all that. The way I kind of set my stuff up is I set it up so if I, if I need certain things, it's not a hassle to just add it, like, back in. Like, yes, this is a complete virtual rig right now. So, you know, basically all the, you know, complete ampless rig, rather, you know, because the SGT is an analog preamp. But it's pretty much all, it's, it's, it's two different amps, if, if you can't tell. It's pretty much two different um, amp stacks. One of them is, um, right now, is the Aguilar running through a Fender Bassman 115 and you know, Bassman Neo 115. And then the the other one is the SDT, Ampeg SDT, running into an Aguilar 410s with a tweeter. Bam. And then I can mix the two. And you see that? This, it gets such a big sound out of both of them. You know, let me see. I'm gonna switch this one to an SGT too. Might as well. Okay, yeah, it's this one already. Okay. And I'm sure you're like, well, what's the point of that? It's because you a lot of times you get the best tones when you can mix things together. So this, there are two different tones. Let's do let's hear them separately one more time.
So you got plenty of options there with that, you know, tone wise, you can um, just just with that stuff. Just with the mixing right there. You can do more of the tone X, less of the dry, because what it is is. So what we looking at is if you're looking at the iPad on the bottom left um which is just tied to the zoom b6 that's why i don't have it on screen just because i already have this on screen i need this is a little more um important than just looking at the body of it i figured <laughs> but um yeah so the sin is gonna go out to uh, dang it let me do something real quick this send is gonna go out to this amp and I'm going to, I'm going to use, so now I'll have three different, um, three different sounds I can mix by just having it go out to this and mic in this cabinet up. Really, it's going to be four different sounds because I'm going to use two mics on the cabinet. So. And we're back. So now what we got when we turn the amp on here, we got a whole nother cabinet too. So And it's not necessarily, you know, you can experiment. And one of the things about doing this, um, like this, all you need is a, um, you don't need a big mixer. You can use a mixer that's like four, four channel mixer or something like that. Or you can just use a mixer and the B6 at the same time if you got an Apple. And, um, and make a, what is it, an aggregated? um device and make so you can make it so the like i do i make my l12 if i'm using all three or if i'm using multiple audio interfaces you can pretty much make them the computer use them like they're one and make them sync up so um i i take my l12 my b6 and my h5 and make them one device and make them the other ones a slave to the l12 and that way, they follow the timing of the L12 and stay together, you know. But as you can hear, it's like um, this Tone X and the B6 both have very low latency, like literally almost no latency at all. Um, you know, in case you were wondering about the Tone X's uh, latency. But yeah. Let's see what we got here. And then we also. 
also got um the other. That's what the cabinet sounds like by itself. And then here it is mixed in. Let's mix them all together, right? So let's try to, let's, uh, let's pan some stuff out, guys. So let's do like this. And then we'll keep this. Move this over here. And then we'll let this one stay in the middle. All right, here we go. And I'm also using the Zoom B6's um, DI types at times too. So like the DI types, um, I've been able to identify three out of four. Because um, it doesn't tell you. It just gives you like, oh, this is a tube DI, this is a list DI. Clearly you can tell by the logo, by the little um, symbols for them, what they are a little bit. So the first one is a Noble preamp emulation. And it sounds it, it, it sounds really good too, um, and then the second one is a tube two, which is a is a the red di or the ready di. Um, and then I haven't figured out solid state one, but solid state two is the Neve um, preamp. I mean the Neve di box, the little small one. Um, there's just a regular di box, um, and yeah, so. I'm thinking the solid state one might be the color box. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like the color box is per se. I mean, it looks close to it, but it doesn't have like the red and blue knobs. Normally it would have knobs like it had, it uses similar colors, you know. Zoom, you, you'll know what it is with Zoom stuff. But all of them together, that's fire. You know, and then you can mix what you want out of that as well so you got what you send into the amp and then as you can see you got the the send there then you got i got to set the sub out and sub out allows the dry um the main knob to affect the send out as well so if i want to say i'm got too much going to the send um or going out to the amp and i need to either increase it i got a master volume knob on the back of the zoom b6 it, it's attached to there when you have it on send it's it bypasses that and that uses that means that out right there is separate from that and the xlr is, doesn't go by that master volume right there at all it goes by the digital one so it's a lot of little flexible options with the b6 people don't really be talking about too much like you got a built-in global eq nobody ever talks about you got built in these di types which make everything sound better and they don't take up an effects lot so things like the eq um you don't need a slot for eq and like for real for real you don't need a um 
you can just use di types if you don't want to use a um like any of the tone type stuff like amp models if you don't want to use that for processing and stuff like that and you can just use this like a pedal board and just have a noble di at the end noble sounding <laughs> preamp at the you know end of it with the di type so you know you say you want to you want to use the tonex and the b6 together like i mean that's what we're doing now but say you want to use them like like the tonex is an upgrade and that's how i suggest you look at it like the tonex is an upgrade for all your multi-effects units like and it's it's a it's pretty much adding unlimited amps to your to your um setup that's pretty much it's a 179 dollar unlimited amp upgrade not only that but you'll be able to take all your own personal amps that and combinations of speakers that you own and you know and you'll be able to take them with you you know how we always buy and sell stuff anyway you know what i'm saying we we trade stuff and everything else so now you can model your stuff before you trade it and bam you already got it the sound you want it the main sound you want it from it and you don't have to hold on to a whole bunch of gear that you'll never take out the house like a lot of them tube amps people be <laughs> carrying around these i'm not i'm not carrying on tube amp i'm sorry you're short if I get, if, a, if a tube amp got to be carried, you, I'm not doing it. Not these days. When it was necessary is one thing. But people used to also walk with a donkey and a, and, a, uh, and a plow, too. But now we got tractors. So, I mean, duh. Um, here we go. Nah, I'm not messing with you. I'm not messing with you. I like tube amps, too. I'm not. <laughs> uh but yeah, as you can see, just mixing these sounds, you get a beautiful um, combination of um, stuff here that you can mix. Um, I can change this preamp to a the Magellan preamp. And say I don't want to use the same, um, say I don't want to use that same um, preamp well, I haven't found a way around that yet. Let me think about it. I have to think about that as a solution. But so pretty much I got a, a dry signal chain, not a dry signal chain, but I got a, a effects chain that's running all these. So let's just do some examples of stuff. So say I wanted this bit crusher and that. So I'm going to take the poly blue and this bit crusher and... And we'll do that MXR um, analog bass filter back here. Um, that's on this red loop here. We're along with the SG uh, MS50G and the Digitech Jam Man Solo XT. I want to get another XT before I can't find one because you can sync those up. I like the fact that you can just sync those up. That's amazing. You can run a whole band loop looping. But yeah so we got a whole signal pair right running that way and let's turn on the limiter and the other uh, pre finish out that sound and what that is hold on this so i can mute this real quick it's this one mute this All right, so that's what that sounds like. Um, that's that's pretty much the Tone X1. That is the Tone X1 and the B6 
basically the two separate IRs, and then I have them. So, like I said, I got the sin going out, and then, the, of course, the preamp is running into the B6. Well, it's running, yes, it's running into the B6 input. So, the Tonex is running into the return. The All this is running into the return of it, which effectively bypasses, um, I mean, excuse me, all this is running into the input. The Tone X1 is running into the return, effectively bypassing all of this into the Zoom B6. Zoom B6 is running from an XLR to the audio interface, okay? So that's the setup right now. And this this is it's important to have this type of sometimes complex routing so you can have control. Um if you were going to break down a setup every night, this is this wouldn't be too much of a hassle to do, to be honest. And then once you were, um, had everything, you would just put this stuff on a on a pedal board, um, the direct stuff you would need. To be honest, you don't have to have, you know, I like to have this stuff for the home studio type stuff so I can get my projects done a little better or have multiple tones, unlimited tones, you know, whatever it is. Or, like, have my amps. I don't, you know, if I record that sound with my amps, I would have to, and I do any editing or have to redo something, I already have that amp sound in the computer. So I don't have to, I can just pull it back up. I don't need to set up the mics and do that every single time. But, you know, plus when you're doing tracks for folks, you know, you got, they got options. You got options, too. You want to just have different tone options. But... So we got that, um, and then we adding in the other mics. So now, spread. So what you're hearing is, again, that's actually three different, uh, four different signal paths, but two of them are coming through. We consolidate it to one mono um, signal path, and we just mixing, blending the two on it, and that's the B6. You know, that's that just works out better. A lot of times, simpler for live applications. You know, run them running stereo. You know, I have a stereo, did stereo version of this earlier, but running it into the B6 um, allows you to then run just that one XLR out from the DI out of the Zoom B6, and you don't have to worry about 
you know, all that extra stuff. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got to grab a DI box that might color it. They ain't got to do all that extra stuff. You're going to get that exact tone to the system. And, you know, it that mix will be the same every single night as long as you don't um, change the um, settings. You know what I'm saying? Which we we going to change the settings because we do that. That's what we do. We change, we, 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 we turn knobs and we flick flick switches and, and and then we get mad that we lost the favorite tone that we always love. And then we find it again. It's half the fun, guys. You never know. One day it sounds great. The next day it sucks. Who knows? Who knows? Oh no. But that's part of the thing too. These digital rigs help make it consistent. Like only thing that would change from day to day, um, you know, or say uh, I'm doing a gig, it would make it inconvenient for me to run that um, these mics. You know what I'm saying? They, they, I mean, the house, it's inconvenient for the house to run it. They don't even, a lot of the house venues and stuff don't even really like you to have amps no more. So, you know, I got my amp list set up, but I still have it so I can incorporate a full amp whether I want to use the preamp or not, you know, and I can also, you know, bypass all of this, you know, if I wanted to, I could have did a, um, a through from the Ampeg to the live rig and to the Harky um, preamp, the tube preamp in the front, instead of right now it's running through the power amp in because I have um, the Magellan being the preamp for it. So, you know, but if I didn't want to do that and I wanted to have three different preamps and three different signals, you know, I, I, three different um, preamp sounds layered, I can do that too. Because I can have that through from the SGT to run straight to the um, Harky. Now I got that going through the amp, that amp, and that's mic'd up. Then I'd have the... Um, Whatever, you know, the preamp out of this running to the Zoom B6. And so whatever preamps I was using up here, you know, if I was using the SGT, so, you know, the SGT, the preamp out would be affected. The through would be unaffected when it's when, when that preamp is on. And then run that to the Zoom B6. And then while at the same time have another signal path, that's running another amp model and cabinet, you know, IR, running that to the return of the Zoom V6. So that's like three amp setups. It's like having three amps on stage, you know, but just like a physical version. You can do this in Amplitude, too, <laughs> if you want to see it visually. Or like um, if, you, if you just want to have a digital version of it or, you know, Amplitude. That's the other thing with this Tone X1. You don't just get, get Tone X SE. You get Amplitude SE, which means you get effects. And we got to go through those, too. I haven't even thought about that. Yeah, just reminded me. Good job. So we got to go through the effects on Amplitude as well. Um, but you got all that stuff on Amplitude. And you can run up to three different amp models at a time. You can have parallel signal paths. Um, so you can run them stereo in and out. Um, you can just so much flexibility with that software and stuff but you got access to all that stuff and this that's bananas you know but all you need you know um, that's why I said that the Tone X1 definitely makes a is a I, I have to say this is one of the absolute best pedals I ever played um, it's so realistic sounds just like the amps and stuff um, that you're modeling and you get a ton of ton of options with the jank. You know, you can run it in so many different scenarios or you can just run it by itself and just throw it in your gig bag and you got everything to go. The Zoom B6 has always been an awesome piece of gear. It has great amp models in, on it and IRs on there too. You see how big that the IR sound on this jank? Like, they sound way... Right, <laughs> they sound incredible, and the amp models sound almost spot on. Like they sound very, very, very good on the Zoom B6. So, and they don't take a lot to get them to sound good. 
and you got all the parameters you need and none of the ones you don't. They definitely slimmed down some of the parameters from the B3 and, you know, in the MS60B, um, the, the, the older MS60B, they definitely slimmed down the, the pr- amount of parameters, but they increased the processing um, sample rate of this. So like this, the Zoom B6 has a better processor than the Zoom B3. So it, it you know, it sounds better. That's why some of the app models use so much of the processing power because they're they it is a they sound really good. <laughs> Can't get them to sound really good and have them not use any effects power. That's why I don't like the I'm the, I don't be when people when you look at the line six stuff they allow you to use more effects and stuff than the zoom stuff at a time than the base stuff the zoom base stuff. But that's because Zoom's bass stuff also is designed specifically for bass. And in order to get it really realistic, they had to use a lot of processing power. And therefore, you can only use this. You can use you got to use less effects. You know what I'm saying? At a time, because it's the same processing power as the guitar stuff. But the bass stuff uses more of it per unit, especially the amp models, especially the amp models and the um, IRs and stuff like that. So. You know, this is just stuff to keep in mind, guys, as you're playing and, you know, you can try all different setups. You know, if you have a older units and this same stuff will work for the HX stomp, you know, um, or like the Helix. If you got a Helix, the Tone X1 is definitely a good upgrade for that. You know, you can run, you know, three different if you, you know, you can run two app models on there and then run this as a third one you know some you know it's it's a ways to hook up the hx stop with the um tone x1 as well so it just depends on what you what you like guys but yeah this is just one way i'll be running my setup and this is this would be the mono way um you know me running my b6 stuff you know that's my live rig but i added the bass in the two mic cabinets so you can hear that as well but if i was recording i could use those two cabinets too along with the irs and now i got uh just a massive bass sound like just all together So, massive, just a big bass sound. And mind you, the room ain't, ain't loud at all. It, it ain't even really depending on. It's it's gonna be a big, massive bass sound regardless. You know whether you're using the live amp sound or not. That's what I said. You can choose to mic up the cabinet or not, or you can use it for to fill out the room. You know, depending on the situation. Like I said, a lot of venues are going. You go ampless now, so you know. I can literally show up to a gig with three pedals and have all types of effects <laughs> running. I can show up with an MS60B, a Tone X1, and a Zoom B6 and go crazy. That's They give me 10 effect slots from the Zoom stuff, plus the Tone X1, 
also has a compressor, noise gate, and reverb on there, and EQ. So technically, if I wanted to, I can just use the MS60B and the Zoom B6 and run both of those um, into the Tone X1, have that be my finisher, like have the Tone X1 be my finisher, finishing my sounds, you know, my amp and reverb and any compression, additional compression I might need or use the compressor like a limiter um, or any noise I might need to cut out because I'm using some heavy overdrive or distortion or something. You know, it. you got options when you got like this Tone X1 in a multi-effects unit. Like, you really do got good options. So, excuse me. You can um do, instead of running that, that actual amp, if you wanted to, you can, um, you could just run these drinks and it'd be fine. Nobody's going to complain about them bass tones. Like, they just not. Like, they might, they're going to get, you're going to get a lot of compliments. So, make sure you go, when these Tone X packs are available, you know what I'm saying? You make sure you grab them. But yeah, guys, this has been another episode of All Base Creations, Effects, Tutorials, Demos, and Review. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share, guys. Um, you know, trying to give you guys tone secrets, you know what I'm saying? So this is basically how to use your, your Tone X one to upgrade your zoom b6 or how to um you know get them to play nicely together and add a lot to your sound i know it looks like you know you you're only really using three effects on the b6 right there that's in that instant that's just one patch you know if i wanted to switch up things i could easily do that like i don't have to have an ir here i don't have to have these two like um at the end because people, like the engineers, uh, take care of that stuff. For real, for real. Um, like, I don't need this limiter and or this mic pre. Because one, for one, on the Tonex, I already have an actual 1073 running through, <laughs> you know, running the mics through those, you know. But, yeah. You guys, definitely, um, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me, you know. Um, you know, just keep your options open and... You can just you can swap these out for um for other effects, you know what I'm saying? And you can move them around, whatever you need to go before the send, or after the send, before the return, after the return, you know. So basically everything after return is going is 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 going on everything. So like this all that that limiter seventy six and all that stuff is going on everything. And the return allows where you mixing it. And then you know, you can have whatever in between the sending and return. You need, you know, like an IR or you can have an effect there and it would, wouldn't go on the return sound. You just go through the dry sound on the return. And you can have that send run out to something else that you might need as well. If you want to run stereo, you know, or you want to run, you know, let them be able to pan two different signals, you know, you can run a, a line out from the main out and the um sub out i have to set the sub out for the sim so i got options but this has been another episode of all base creations uh if i know i probably already said it <laughs> all, <laughs> all base creations effects tutorials demos and review um i am the base nagus find me on all social media um the base n-e-g-u-s yes yeah, right and um, find me on um, Bandcamp, all base creations Bandcamp, and grab all my music. You know, if you want, that's the best place to support my music. If you would like to, um, or you can stream it. But we don't make much off the streaming, so if you want to really support me, you can do it there. Um, but if you still want to just lightly support me, go ahead stream it anyway. We in there. Um, what else we got? Yeah, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. And, um, oh, please, you know what I'm saying? If you find this information useful, hit that super thanks and hit the cash app, dollar sign, R-E-G-G-I-E-P-A-Y-N-E-B-A-S-S, -S, which is dollar sign, Reggie Payne Bass. So, 
Find me on, on Cash App, too, and hit me on there, too. I appreciate y'all. Everything count. Peace.